Hello, and welcome to Book Brag. I'm Lynn Constantine here with my co host, Wendy Walker, and we are thrilled to welcome DJ Palmer, otherwise known as Daniel, a USA Today best selling author of 12 suspense novels. And we're here to talk today about his latest, The Perfect Daughter. Thank you. Welcome. We're so happy to have you here. So to get started, can just tell us a little bit about your latest book, which is out today. Well, the thank you, first of all, for having me. Um, I'm a big fan of both of you guys as writers. And I've read all of your books. Actually, I really think I have read all of your books. So (laughs) um, it's awesome to be here. The Perfect Daughter is uh, is about um, a young girl who has dissociative identity disorder, which is called uh, the, the new updated term for what was formerly known as multiple personality disorder. And the book opens up with the mother of this daughter being visited by two police officers who inform her that their daughter, that her daughter is uh, currently being held at a police station in a Massachusetts town. She's being charged with murder and she is being charged with the brutal crime of killing her birth mother. So that's chapter one. And uh, the book unfolds from there. And it's really a story of, um, is she lying or is she telling the truth? And it builds upon this current issue with dissociative identity disorder in that it is a polarizing diagnosis and a lot of the uh the professionals in the psychiatric community are convinced that DID is a real condition uh and a number believe that it is real and so the question that the book asks is is Penny the young girl the perfect daughter is she lying is she telling the truth and as I explore her backstory and her history and take you through that story, that is really the question that gets answered in the course of the novel. Yes, well, I had the privilege of getting an early read and it's a fabulous book, as are all, I've read yours as well. And um, so it's in perfect style where you keep us nervous till the end. Um, So where did you come up with the idea for this particular, to write about this? Was it more about the psychology of the disorder or was there something that sparked the um, seed for the book? Yeah, it was uh, a conversation I had with my editor. We were talking about what would make for interesting subject matter to write a book about. And dissociative identity disorder was something that just kind of popped into my mind. But I was very, very nervous about writing a book that potentially could go into a very tropey, cliche Mm -hmm. direction. And I was also very mindful about kind of the inherent dangers about writing about mental illness that I certainly didn't want to stigmatize the people who are dealing with mental illness in any way, shape or form that I wanted to treat the subject matter uh, in a non sensationalist way. And that I wanted to also at the same time, create a very riveting story. So I, I was intrigued by the idea of it. Um, but also nervous to tackle the subject. But my editor was extremely excited about the subject matter. And it took me, I, I'm going to say after this is, what did I say? Is book 13 or 12? Mm-hmm. I'm finishing book 13. Yes. Um, that this was the hardest book I've ever written. What made it, what made it so hard? And is there something that you learned uh, as you were writing? Oh yeah. Thank you. Great. Amazing question. Um, so what made it really hard, this is my first, I, I don't want to say it's a who done it because, you know, part of the premise of the story is, is she lying? So, you you know, the, the story, oh, really the, the evidence against the, the accused, the perfect daughter is she is found in the home of the victim alone, covered in the victim's blood, holding the murder weapon. So the idea of her guilt or innocence really isn't in question. She's immediately sent to a psychiatric hospital for evaluation where she ends up staying for the entirety of her pretrial confinement. And what made this really tough for me is I've never written kind of a, I'm gonna call it a whodunit, but it's also a whodunit or a why done it. Um, So I've never really had to kind of puzzle it out. So I had to drop all these breadcrumbs and all these Mm -hmm. clues 
and also show the backstory of this girl and her mental health struggle, treat it with incredible respect, show you how, as the reader, show you how the, the diagnosis unfolds and provide the backdrop of a family history and how the diagnosis impacts the family, while at the same time creating the tension, conflicts, and stakes that are the trademark of our thriller novels. And not only am I dealing with the character of Penny, but I'm dealing with all of her alternate personalities as well. Awesome. So we call a book brag because we like to have you uh, unashamedly brag about your book and read us one of your favorite reviews about it, whether it's a, um, a reader review or a trade review, whatever well, you like. You know, the, the, the best one, she's an amazing uh, book blogger. Um, I love the reader reviews the most because yeah. they're my people and that's who I'm trying to write for. And she just wrote, holy hell, my jaw dropped, my nose hit the floor before losing other parts of my face. I'm screaming, this is freaking fantastic. This is like eating Wagyu steak accompanied with one bottle of St. Emilion Grand Cru and a thick slice of Sweet Lady Jane's chocolate cake. This is quite the thriller feast for me. Wow. Okay, so now it's time for the lightning round where we're just going to get a little more personal, let people get to know the, the man behind the author. Are you an introvert or an extrovert? I'm a intrextrovert. <laughs> I like that. Introverts are energized from being alone and extroverts are energized from being in the company of others. Right. I get my energy from uh, from both. Uh, Beatles or Stones? So Stones, is that an uh, answer? Is that possible? Or Stone Beetle? Stone Beetle? <laughs> no, you got to pick one. Come on now. <laughs> Let's, let's I'm a singer-songwriter. I've yeah, recorded three CDs that are. I think they're good. I think they're good CDs. So I have three um, CDs of my music. I've written that, like hundreds of songs, crazy amounts of songs. You know, without John Lennon, I'm not a songwriter. So I have to go with the Beatles in okay. that regard. Yeah. But and I know it's a lightning round, but I'm verbose in my books. I'm a novelist. I'm not a haikuist. I'm a novel. Um, I just have to give props to the Stones. They they are either the first or second greatest rock and roll band that will ever be. I think of the Beatles as a pop band, the Stones as a rock and roll band. Only above the Stones, maybe, is Led Zeppelin. Uh, what's your favorite place to write? Right where I am right now. I've got uh, this little cave. Uh, I'm about five minutes from the ocean. I'm not great at writing in coffee shops or public places, so I need to be introverted. Yeah. All right, biggest pet peeve? Um, insincerity. I just want to know the truth, mm-hmm. unless you're reviewing my book. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not a big fan of insincerity, but I am a, a big fan of five-star reviews. So. <laughs> okay, got it. I like it. Um, do you have a favorite word? Yeah, my favorite word for some unknown reason is marshmallow. I don't know why. Mm. I just okay. always like the word marshmallow. I feel like it's it's soft, sweet, yet kind of you know mysteriously fun. Okay. It's like fun. There's a fun aspect to marshmallow. <laughs> okay, okay, currently binge currently binge watching. Um, it was the the Undoing Nicole Kidman and Hugh Grant. Mm, it's great, yeah. Hugh Grant. So is there a book that you wish, that you love so much that you wish that you'd written yourself? I guess in the, kind of in the, the world of books that I think are just the greatest books ever, and if I could have written one of them, I really wish I could have written 1984. It's got yeah. the philosophy, yeah. it's got the sort of prescient view of, humanity and it's brilliantly constructed and brilliantly written and if i could have written that i mean who wouldn't want to say i wrote 1984 that's a great great answer i like that okay this one's a tough one uh celebrity crush oh it's not tough (laughs) not tough natalie portman oh yeah beautiful yeah i mean just just one you're not going to give us three three answers for that one 
three inches. Pres- no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Like no. now, I can just say it's Natalie Portman. No, no, if, no. If, would, if you had to do something other than write, what would it be? I, I would be. Uh, uh, I'm not going to say CEO because it's too much pressure. But like the second in charge of a of a startup company. I'm an entrepreneur at heart. I was an entrepreneur before I became a writer. And I like building and creating anything, songs, books, and companies. So I'm going to go with the last question, which is what fictional character would you love to have dinner with? I feel like Harry Bosch and I would get along weirdly. Like we would just kind of, I'd pick his brain about how he does his job. I'd be interested in everything about Harry. I'm a big fan of Harry's. I kind of want to have dinner with Harry Bosch. Well, this was so much fun. Thank you for spending this time with us. And um, we want everyone to go out and get The Perfect Daughter. It's available today wherever books are sold. And do you want to tell everyone how they can find you on social media and your website? For sure. I'm available on uh, djpalmer.com. And then uh, Facebook, it's DJ Palmer Author. And on Twitter, which is another place I kind of hang out, I do more Facebook than I do Twitter. It's uh, Twitter DJ Palmer author. But on Facebook, I have a reader group and I urge people to kind of join my reader group because I give away a lot of books and special prizes and and things of that nature. And that's been a lot of fun. So Facebook's kind of my main community. I really appreciated this opportunity and I had so much fun talking with you both. Yeah. Said I'm a big fan of both of yours and I appreciate Aww. being here. Feeling is mutual. Thank you. All right, we'll bye everybody. Bye. 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 bye.